Lexi Tobin, you are a wedding influencer, proposal planner, Gemini, (laughs) and 2024 bride. Yes. Did I get that right? Yep. All right. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Tell us how you got to be a wedding influencer slash proposal planner. That is a loaded question. There, <laughs> there is a long story behind it. But basically back in 2019, my older sister was getting engaged and my brother-in-law came to me asking for help with this proposal. I had nothing to do with any social media event planning. I didn't have experience in the wedding space at this time. He literally just asked me for help and I was so excited. I was like the excited younger sister. And I helped him plan this epic proposal that ended up going completely viral on the internet. And soon after that, I had friends and family reaching out to me, asking for help with their proposals. And I noticed that there was like something so much bigger to this. And I was just doing what I loved, helping other people and planning these really amazing moments. And it turned into a full-time business. I love that. So what was, let's break down that first proposal that you did. Yeah. Give us the details. Location. So... I'm a family person and so is my sister. And we've always spent our summers at our parents' beach house. And we both call that our happy place. Mm. So I knew that would be a perfect place for my brother-in-law to propose. And we then just took it from there. We got all the decor, made it super special, lit the room and the environment and got all of our family together and made a really special weekend together. Amazing. And since then, how many proposals have you helped to plan? I couldn't even count at this point, honestly. (laughs) I don't know the number at this point, but I will say that the proposals have more recently expanded outside of just proposals. And that's been really fun. A lot of my clients are now reoccurring clients and they come to me asking for help with their bridesmaid proposals Mm. and their bridal showers, engagement parties. So it is something that's been really fun for me to come this full circle moment with my clients and be part of all those major milestones with them. What do you think goes into an epic proposal? I think that what goes into an epic proposal is definitely like understanding what you and your partner love and what you guys gravitate towards. I always tell my clients to let love lead the way. Mm. Some people like small and intimate things like sitting at home in front of a fireplace during the holiday times in the winter. And some people like big public affairs. So you really have to know who you are as a couple and what interests you. And then from there, you can create this sort of vision of what that looks like and cater it to your personalities and your love. And I think that it's all about relating to you as a person. You're 100% right to know your partner or the couple because for me, the worst case scenario is like a jumbotron public situation. I got engaged in Central Park and it was, there weren't that many people around, but the one or two people that kind of saw from far away what was happening kind of came over. As I was getting proposed to, I saw that and I started to get a little bit embarrassed just because I'm so personal. Like I don't, I'm so private, right? With with my personal life that I was a little bit embarrassed, which is, it was like one or two people, right? But if he would have done it in a truly public setting with a lot of people, you would have panicked. I probably would have passed out. I probably would have just, which is funny because I speak in public all the right. time. I was going to say, I'm surprised. No, I, I'm I'm great in front of a crowd when it comes to business and talking and, you know, being social. But when it comes to my private and personal I life, that. it's like a vulnerable yeah, it's, thing. It's not for everyone. And it's funny that you say that because I planned a proposal in Central Park and there were so many people sitting on the rocks waiting for the proposal to happen Mm -hmm. as we were setting up because they were so excited. And like, it just, it does come to show like you have to understand your personality and your partner's personality. Mm -hmm. And that's what will make it epic. You just want to make them the happiest that they can be. How much does it cost to hire someone to plan your proposal? And I'm not saying you specifically, but like, what do you think someone should be putting together as a budget for a proposal? I will say that the same way that 
every wedding has a different budget, goes the same for proposals. And again, it comes down to your personality. Some people might not want a whole to do with the flowers and candles and photographer. They might literally be just on a walk with a beautiful scenic backdrop Mm -hmm. and get down on one knee and that's not going to cost you anything. Mm -hmm. But then other people will want something really extravagant, something that they can capture and show other people and have that really picturesque moment that they can hold on to forever and that will cost you something. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what it is that you're looking to put into the proposal and that really does vary. Your business has kind of come full circle because not only did you plan your sister's proposal years ago, which yes. launched your career, yes. but then you got engaged yes. and planned a wedding. What was your proposal like? It's so funny. I always say that that was a very pivotal time in my career, which is such a strange thing to think about because I wouldn't have expected like my proposal to also have an impact on my career, but it did because now I was able to really resonate with my followers in such a different way Mm -hmm. by being a bride. Everyone always gave pressure to my husband now, Ben, that he's planning a proposal for a proposal planner. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what are you going to do? And honestly, I didn't think it was happening for a while, but Ben left for a two-day work trip. He was in North Carolina and he was sending me photos on the plane saying taking off, landing, sent me photos on site that he was at. And then he asked me to go outside and grab a package outside our our front door in the middle of the day. I thought nothing of it. I was working from home that day. I opened the door. I had a huge bun on my head. Like I was not looking presentable by any means. And I opened the door to a photo frames of us a bouquet of roses and a card with an envelope that had a big number one on it. And I knew right then and there. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening? And I just panicked. It was like a Thursday afternoon. I sat on the floor with my hands on my head, like, oh my God, for seven full minutes, there was a video of me that my (laughs) sister snuck and I did not see anyone around me. And um, then I went on a surprise scavenger hunt to some of our favorite spots around New York City. And we ended off at the William Vale Hotel, which is where we fell in love. So it was such a meaningful proposal. So much fun because I got to have like a solid one to two hours of like really preparing and getting ready Mm. emotionally for the proposal to go down before it actually happens. So that was like a really cool thing because most of the proposals that I plan, it just happens right away. And I loved being able to like process it all and really take in all that time and those moments. So it was just so exciting. Who helped him plan it? My mom, who works with me on a lot of my proposals, she's part of my team. She helped him and so did my older sister, who was part of the videotaping. Um, So she returned the favor? This is the sister that you helped with? Yeah. Like I said, I'm a family person, so we're a tight-knit family. That's so sweet. So you didn't know the proposal was coming? I had no idea. So were you involved in the ring design? Did you talk about it? So I had no idea that I was getting engaged anytime in the near future. I definitely thought I was months away, but I did know that Ben was the one for a while and I didn't know what type of ring I wanted. So I proactively went with my mom and sister to look at rings without even keeping Ben in the loop about things. Like I just wanted to know when the time came, what I wanted so that he would know and that I wouldn't get any hints that it was happening soon. I wanted to be surprised. I didn't want to be involved in that process. I know a lot of people like to go with their significant other, but I really wanted it to be a surprise for me. And it was. So yeah, I just took it upon myself to go on my own. I went to the the Diamond District and I tried on a bunch of different cuts and styles and I I knew it. So you went with your mom and your sister. So they kind of shared with Ben. Yeah. Here's so when Ben, when Ben was ready to propose, he naturally ask my mom and sister knowing that they would know what I wanted. He's not the type to go off on his own and do that. Going back to the proposal itself, because it was spaced out, you were just creating content 
as part of your proposal? Were you sharing it? Did you not want to share it? I was not involved in any creating of the content by... I mean, were you documenting your own proposal as it was happening? No, my sister was documenting it. She was alongside me. She was taking videos of me, but I was not holding my phone up by any means or doing that. So you were super present. You can go to my social media and see my reactions. I was very much in the moment freaking out that this was happening (laughs) because I genuinely had no idea. (laughs) I was shocked. What percentage of the proposals that you plan are people like surprised, like really surprised? That's always something that I ask my clients. I'm like, do they know? Do you think they have a hint? Because like, I like it to be a surprise. I feel like that's such a fun element to planning a proposal. I would say truthfully that 50% knows that it's either coming or happening and 50% has no idea. So you, you'd you be surprised. A lot of people know. I had a sense it was coming right. because the day of my proposal, my fiance encouraged me to put on yeah. a certain dress. Yeah. And I was like, all it takes is like one little thing. I'm like, to- this is a little sus. <laughs> this is a little suspect. This dress of all things. The, it ended up being the perfect dress for the photo. Right. So it was great. Was it white? Um, no, it was um, a, a 19. I'm really into vintage, hence my shirt. Beautiful. It was a 1980s Laura Ashley. Laura Ashley is that designer that used to have like the bedding, the wallpaper, the curtains right. and the, it was like those iconic floral patterns. It was like a navy dress with pink flowers on it. Very kind of whimsy. Anyways, we got engaged in Central Park and the backdrop is a, there's a castle in Central Park. People a don't castle? realize. Like a castle in Central Park. I need to see a photo. It's, it's, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up here and we'll put it on the screen for everyone, anyone watching. But, um, the dress went perfect with this like castle and this green setup. Um, and I mean, he did great. It was the perfect- Lucky you. Yeah. But was there a photographer there? There was, of course, a photographer. Um, and my sister apparently was involved in the, um, you could- sk- This is in Central Park? Yeah. That, people don't know this is in Central Park. What? Yeah. The truth is it was COVID and we were supposed to be in the South of France and our trip was canceled. And therefore, I had a feeling the proposal was coming. Well, I kn- Let me back up. January 2020, I went to Ring Concierge with two of my friends to see Nicole. And I was like, hi. Did he know that you were going? Yes. I said, if if there's a ring that's happening, it will be a ring that I design (laughs) and I select. Exactly. So I'm a Leo. I'm a little more (laughs) controlling when it comes to these things. And it's like, for me, I didn't want to be surprised when it comes to this. I wanted to, this is something that I'm going to wear every single day. I wanted, that was my personal thing to, you know. I totally understand. I didn't want to be surprised with what type of ring that yeah. I had. I wanted to be surprised with the proposal, proposal. itself. Yeah. So I get it. So I picked out the diamond. I said, I want it east, west, you know, I work. And then after I gave my opinion and what I wanted, she said, never text me again about this. Give me his phone number and never ask me again about this. And that was it. That was in January. And we were supposed to be in the South of France in early June, late, I think late May, early June. And our, of course, our travel plans were canceled. And so I kind of was just like, it's never going to happen. Did he even get the ring? She probably sold the diamond. Were you getting antsy? I was getting antsy. And also it was just that time where we were stuck indoors and and I was, you know, it was the summer in New York and anyone who is listening, who knows New York in the summer, it can be miserable. Totally, Like everyone leaves New York in the summer (laughs) to go where- I've been leaving every weekend. (laughs) Yeah. To to go where there's a breeze. Yeah. And we, it was like one of those muggy summers and we were indoors. And so when he was like, let's go to Central Park. I have friends coming in town. I- I was like, oh, I don't really want to. I was kind of just in a f- funk. And he was like, put on a dress. It'll make you feel good. Like, let's just go. It'll be fun to get out of the house. And I was like, put on a dress to go to the park? Hmm, <laughs> it might be something, happening. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that was the tip off. But I can't believe that there's a castle in Central Park that I don't know about. Yeah. Well, we actually have an article on like the best places to get engaged in New York City. And Central Park is top of the list because there's multiple points in Central Park that are beautiful and picturesque. I know that I did a proposal at Ladies Pavilion, which mm-hmm. was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
that is like you feel like you're in a different country. So that that's why he yeah, chose no, it, it because it was to make up for the fact that we were. I got to go see that right yeah, after this. It was. It, it's a good spot. Um, so yeah, but e- even so, I knew that the proposal was co- like I kind of had a sense it was coming as it was happening. I still got that wave right. of anxiety, yeah. nervousness. Oh my God, am I going to faint type situation? At what point did you realize that it was happening when he was proposing? Oh, I, even when I talk about it, I get like secondhand embarrassment because I was like, <laughs> he, was, he was like saying stuff and I'm like, why are you saying stuff? <laughs> and then he like got down on one knee and I was like, oh no. <laughs> and I immediately became aware of the surroundings and I'm like, is anyone looking? I got like embarrassed. Were people there? They, remember I told you it, it was like one or yeah, two. Yeah, but it looks like, pretty like quiet. There was no one behind us, but like, you know, in front there were a couple people. You noticed people. the two people that were there. Yeah. And then <laughs> I see the photographer who's my friend, Yumi, I've known her for years right. and she's wearing a hat because she's trying to like hide Hot, herself right. with her camera and I my knees gave out and I kind of, there's a photo of me where I'm kind of like falling down. yeah and I hear Yumi giggling the photographer <laughs> she's laughing because apparently she's never seen from a proposal someone like like quiver like yeah, that like want to faint or want to, I was like I need to sit down I think I'm gonna faint or pass out That's or so throw amazing. up or something so you know everyone has like the way your emotions hit you is very different, right? Some people cry. Some people like giggle and laugh. I'm not a crier. I do, you know, like when your lips quiver when oh, you get yeah. nervous? Yeah. That's what happens to me. Not my knees. It's my lips when I'm, I was panicking. Like my, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't smile big enough when he was proposing and my lips were just going crazy. You probably should break down of all your proposals, like the, the different- emotions yeah, between the, each person. Yeah. Like there's the faint, there's the lip quiver. There's the there's, scream. Oh, the, are there screamers? <laughs> there's screamers. Oh, wow. <laughs> there are some people who walk in and say, I knew it. I knew it. Like there's crazy reactions that people have. It really varies. What What are some of the best ones? What, what are some ones that come to mind when you think about- has anyone fainted? No. Anyone? So, so no, no fainting. Nothing that stands out to me, yeah. honestly. Um, just all sorts of different reactions and personalities. Like it really just shows right away as soon have as you they see, walk. Do you have a lot of criers? Yes, I do. A lot of criers, but also a lot of like excitement and a lot Any of- Any jumpers? I've seen like a lot of videos people like jump when they're so excited. No, I feel like when- people propose, they actually fall down similar to you, not fainting though, yeah. but like they fall down to their knees and like have that moment. So yeah. it's actually the opposite. Yeah. So th- that was kind of what happened to me. I kind of like also got down on my right. knees. I was like, I'm right. going down right. slowly. Um, Less of so a faint. Fun. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it was just kind of more like the weak in the knees, it. like I so excited. Um, okay. So you've, you've planned quite a few proposals now. Yes. Um, what are some like of the standout ones that you've done or what, what's kind of like the fun stuff that you've been able to do yeah. as part of this process? Yeah. I mean, planning events is so much fun, especially when you have the personality to want to bring a vision to life. And that's what I love and do best. So I've done all sorts of proposals. I mean, I've had a proposal that involved over 50 plus people. They wanted their friends and family involved in the proposal. So we incorporated them into it. And basically she was walking into a restaurant. She thought she was just grabbing drinks with her cousins. And when the elevator doors opened, she saw 50 of her closest friends and families holding one single rose in like a tunnel for her to walk under. And it was like this whole choreographed proposal that was so much more than just the hurricane candles and just the floral arrangements. And then when she walked through that tunnel of roses from all of her friends and family, she had this huge marry me sign. Of course, her partner was standing there and he was in a white tuxedo, which was really cute and just bridally and it gave that special feel to it. And then there was huge sparklers behind them, big flower bouquets and a whole runway for her to walk on. So I've done proposals as big as that, where you're bringing people into it. And then I've also planned more simple proposals, like the one I mentioned in Central Park. That was definitely by far one of my favorites. It was in this pavilion and we decorated the pavilion with like string lights and LED candles since you can't have real candles mm-hmm. in the park. And we just lit the pavilion up on an October evening night. And like, it was just so gorgeous right before they were walking to dinner. So 
it varies, but they're all so unique and so different. I recently just did one at Bon Bon Warehouse. Do you know what Bon Bon is? Mm-hmm. It's the Swedish candy. It's okay. like hot in New York City right now. Everyone's okay. obsessing over this Swedish candy shop. And we went to their warehouse and it was a candy warehouse. So it, we had like a little picnic on the floor waiting for them. And he brought her there because they're obsessed with this candy shop. So it varies from everything that you could possibly imagine. And again, it all comes down to their personality and like what they bond over and what feels right to them as a couple. So I'm I'm really curious. Do you have ideas of proposals that you want to do? Like, are you always thinking I'm, of like amazing proposal? I'm waiting for someone to come to me telling me that they want to do a proposal at a restaurant, but I don't want to give my idea away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a specific restaurant you want to do it at. If you want to do a restaurant proposal, I have an incredible idea in a public setting. So please come to me, hire me. <laughs> Loverly has a engagement yeah, proposal account bling book, right? And we feature proposals all day long. Yeah, you long. guys featured me. Yeah. It's <laughs> probably and how we sister. found you. Yeah. And um, there's so many like epic proposal. And they're like, we've seen hot air balloons. We've seen people on hikes, on mountaintops, on the beach, right? There was like so many different totally. ways that you can do it. Like, do you have outside of this New York city proposal, do you have like a bucket list of things that you want to do? Well, I'm actually doing something that's on my bucket list right now, which mm-hmm. I'm super excited about. I am planning a proposal in Switzerland. So oh, wow. that's obviously my first proposal outside of Manhattan, which I'm so excited for. It's actually next week. Oh, wow. Um, and I've been- So by the time this comes out, yeah, it'll be up. Okay, I already thought about that. I was like, <laughs> we're good to we're good to share this. But um, I am working with a team in Switzerland to bring this to life. And I'm so excited. Like I've been wanting to do an international proposal. And this was actually going to be in Paris. So I was at first planning it in Paris and then their trip got changed around and we pivoted to Switzerland. But that kind of just gave me so much exposure to planning a proposal in different countries. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm just really excited about it. So, so did you hire a local photographer? Yes. Okay. Got it. Amazing. So I did a ton of research and it was just a great learning experience for me. And the client knew that this was my first international proposal. So like we were in it together. I love that. Uh, If someone is thinking about getting engaged and would like to hire a proposal planner to help assist with that process, how far in advance are they reaching out? Ideally, they would be reaching out months in advance, like three to six months. I like to have ample time and wiggle room to bring all the pieces together, but more cases than not, they're coming to me two to four weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, we're on super tight timelines and I've been finding more commonly, especially in the summer, that people come like two weeks in advance and they're like, hey, I want to propose. Like, can you help me in two weekends from now? And I'm like, I am booked. But a lot of people do do that. So I am always like prepared for those last minute. Do not be a last minute Larry. Please, please. Or Lucille. (laughs) (laughs) Reach out in advance. I The ones that I am able to work on for months, like there's so much thought and conversation that goes into it. And it allows me to like get to know my clients on such a deep level that it helps me incorporate like even more ideas that we had initially put plans. Whereas if I'm doing it in two weeks, like it's more just about like bringing all the details together. But I love when there's that extra layer of like, meaning and relationship and trying to like bring that to the day of. Yeah. If you are executing within two weeks, it's just about getting it done and getting exactly. it done right. And I can get it done, Yeah, but I prefer months More in time. advance. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what, I'm so curious, what percentage of couples end up hiring like a photographer or a videographer to professionally shoot? Is that like a requirement for you? It's not a requirement, but I haven't had one client that hasn't wanted a photographer or videographer. To Um, document. Yeah. I shouldn't say a videographer. Um, I haven't had one client who hasn't wanted a photographer. Some like the videographer as well. But 
Yeah, that's like a given for me. And it's because if you're going to invest in having someone to plan yeah, an epic proposal, you want to have it documented. I, I mean, in today's world, everyone likes to see things through photos and videos and content. Like that's the world that we're living in. So I feel like it would be really unique to not do it, especially if you're hiring a proposal planner. <laughs> and is there an expectation when you plan others' proposals that you're going to share that with your audience? Great or question. are people... Like, is that a given? People say they don't want you to share it. Great question. I am very understanding of people's privacy. Like you said, you're not someone who likes to put your personal life out there. And I am totally understanding of that. The only expectation that I prefer for my clients and ask them is if I can post the actual setup itself, Mm. if they don't want their faces in it. Mm. And that's totally fine with me. Like I'm happy to do that and I respect their privacy, but I do like to show and use the setup if I can. Um, so that's the only requirement. But do people come to you saying, Hey, will you share my proposal? Like, did, is oh, that yeah. part of the, they, I they think, want you to, I think a lot of people come to me because they want it on social media, mm-hmm. which I think is interesting. Um, and that's kind of how it all started. Mm-hmm. Like people wanted to be putting their proposals out there publicly. And that's part of the reason. The that amplification. They came, yeah, of it's this part of the reason moment. why they came to me. But as my business has grown and grown, like now I am so much bigger than I was when I first started. Mm-hmm. And there are also clients who are super private and do just need help with the services and don't want their face on social media. So I get it all, but there are definitely a handful that want, want it to be amplified, like you said. What is something that you wish the proposal, what do you call them? The proposer, the proposer. Okay. What is something you wish the proposer knew in like all proposers knew when, when they're planning a proposal? How much time and labor goes into planning the proposal? I think people get surprised with pricing sometimes for certain things but I don't think they realize until the day of when they see the setup happening, how much behind the scenes there is. You have to get trucks to bring the flowers and boxes of candles that are glass and bring them to these settings and set them up and clean them up and stay there throughout the entire duration of the proposal and then clean it up after. So like there's just so much manual labor that goes into the proposal and our pricing is built into that. And I do wish that was something that people knew more from the get-go rather than realizing that more on the day of, if that makes sense. I've heard uh, event planners say that people are often shocked by the cost of flowers, but every flower is touched by someone, right? Massaged, strategically placed, right? And so they get shocked by by that cost. Um, I do think people get surprised by delivery charges and setup fees, but how do you think it's getting there? How do you think, you know, these beautiful build outs are, are, are being set up, right? Who's doing it? I want to go back to Central Park, that proposal that I spoke about before. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to lug suitcases with my team through Central Park because you obviously can't drive yeah. through Central Park. And we had so many glass hurricane candles that we had to bring there. Then we had to bring ladders to hang things up on the pavilion. And we waited it, um, f- we waited for the proposal to happen. And by the time the proposal happened, it was pitch black. So when we were cleaning up, they were gone already. They had their great moment, super special. They were they were fine. My team, however, including the photographer, we were running away from rats in (laughs) Central Park that in the pitch black in October. And we were literally on our hands and knees with rats surrounding us left and right. Like it's not always as glamorous as it seems. It's an amazing business. I love what I do. I wouldn't change a thing about it. 
But I think there are pieces that really do go unnoticed, what goes on behind the scenes. And like, that's a perfect example of it. It's not as easy. And that does need to be built into the pricing. I, I totally believe you on the r- rats in Central Park. Because like, <laughs> as soon as like- It was insane. <laughs> it's like the vampire rats come out. As soon as the sun goes down, they start like sprinting. We were- freaking out. It was hilarious and creepy at the same time. Have there been any like proposal like mishaps or things that like surprised you that you had to quickly pivot on? Um, Proposal mishaps. I would say the only struggle I've really encountered is weather Mm. and you can't control the weather. Mm -hmm. I was planning this really extravagant Hamptons proposal on this 300 foot long driveway. It was like the Alexander Cooper proposal. Did you see that? Mm -mm. Oh, it was. All right. Go look up. Okay. Go look at that after. Describe the Alexander. It was, it was basically at their home, which was a gorgeous house and their driveway was literally 300 feet long. And we had hurricane candles on the perimeter of the driveway all 300 feet. Mm. And then in the center, we had white rose petals all the way down 300 feet. So like, it was just this really grand entrance as soon as she got out of the car and she had to walk down the entire driveway. And then the gates opened and there was a huge flower backdrop, bouquets Mm. everywhere. And he was down on one knee. So it was this like really extravagant entrance. And again, it was in the Hamptons. So like you would hope for good weather. And it was pouring. And I'm always someone who's like plan for bad weather because you need to expect the unexpected because the unexpected happens all the time. Um, And I said to him going into it, I was like, what is our plan B? Do you want to push to the day after? Are you flexible with his dates? He said, I am not flexible at all. We have to do it on this date. So if it rains, it's going to be like a notebook situation. We're going to walk through with an umbrella and we're going to make it great. And I said, okay, totally fine. Your day. Um, And it did rain for the setup. So it did not end up raining when she opened the car doors and walked down through the driveway. But the entire three and a half set our setup, it was downpouring on us. And my team literally, again, not glamorous moment, we had rolls of paper towels and we were wiping every raindrop off these hurricane candles, making sure that we could light the candles. And we basically like couldn't get it fully set up until 10 minutes before she arrived. So like things like that happen all the time. That's just the reality of the situation. And like, you have to be able to roll with the punches at any given time. How was the actual proposal? Amazing. Again, you can find that on my social media. It was gorgeous. And we are so grateful that the sun came out literally the 10 minutes before. It wow. was like, they, the sun was there for them. It was wild. Um, but yeah, it definitely would have been a different situation had it completely downpoured for the actual proposal. <laughs> and when was this? Was this a summertime? This was right after the summer in like September-ish, I want to say. When the weather starts to be a little bit. Exactly. Like but even it, during the summer, you could get like a random... It's such a hit or miss every, yeah. you know, you never know. It poured Just, on my wedding day. Oh, it did? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because I would love to <laughs> hear about your wedding and the yeah. planning process. Because yeah. for all intents and purposes, you're, you're basically a full-blown planner now. Yes. While you focus on proposals and you're yes. doing some of these smaller events. I'm now doing all sorts of wedding events. Um, and I'm just a wedding content creator and a bridal influencer. So just being in the space, like I'm fully immersed in it. Um, so yeah. What was your, what was planning your wedding like? Planning my wedding was amazing. I mean, it's one thing to be an expert in this space before I got engaged and just love the wedding industry and know all of the nitty gritty details that go into planning a wedding, but it's another thing to experience it firsthand. So being a bride was just for me, such a personal and amazing emotional experience, being able to like understand all the feels that come with being a bride and to resonate like a step deeper in what I do every day. And of course, getting to just plan this huge special event with Ben and our families um, was just so special where my family and friends are all based in New York. He is from Florida. So our worlds are pretty separate. 
um, in terms of just like our friends and our families. And it was just so special to plan an event, knowing that our worlds would be in the same room. That doesn't happen all the time. And we were just so excited for it to bring everyone together and celebrate our love all together. Give us the breakdown. You got okay. engaged when? Your wedding was when? I got engaged on March 2nd, 2023. And I got married on March 2nd, 2024, exactly one year later. As soon as you got engaged, you started planning immediately? I mean, I feel like I've been planning my wedding for years, you know? Like I, I live in this space. So yes, I was definitely quicker than the average bride, but I had a very clear vision going into this process for a while, knowing like what I like and what I don't like. I feel like being a bridal content creator has given me an advantage to other brides, I think, in the sense where I've been able to know over the past few years what I like and what I don't like and what I want to incorporate into my day and vice versa. So I feel like I've naturally been doing this without even realizing So did you already know what your venue was before you got engaged? I didn't know what my venue was, but I did know that, I mean, I knew right away when Ben proposed in Brooklyn, like Brooklyn meant so much to us. It's where we fell in love. It's where we got engaged. And I love the idea of getting married there too, coming that full circle moment. And I did know about a venue in Brooklyn from my family members who were obsessed with this venue. And like I said, I'm a family person. So their opinions meant a lot to me. And I went to tour that venue and it was the only venue that I ended up touring. So I was pretty quick with my decision. It was in Brooklyn. I love the venue. I love the fact that they had a date exactly one year from my engagement. It all just felt so right. And like something that really stood out about this venue, it's the Liberty Warehouse in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Um, When you walk in, like it's a warehouse, it's a super small space. It has brick fireplaces. It overlooks the Statue of Liberty and the Manhattan skyline. And it just almost feels like you're in a home. And I loved that. I've been to a lot of weddings with these really grand, beautiful um, sceneries. And like for me, I just wanted something that felt a little cozier and more intimate. That's like what resonates with Ben and I. So it just felt so right. And I didn't feel like any more search was necessary. And I just rolled with it. Who helped you plan the event? Was it like your family very involved in it? Yes. Yes. So I worked very closely with my parents in planning my wedding. They were amazing throughout the process. They, I learn everything that I know from them. They are also incredible at hosting and naturally have this like in their blood to be able to plan something special. So it's been really special getting to work with my mom on all the proposals that I do. And again, what was your dad like? Bring your dad into the mix. My dad is so organized. It's incredible. So to have his business side of the brain where he's able to help me in making spreadsheets and trackers and budgeting. Like he was so amazing at those details. Whereas my mom was so great at helping me with the aesthetics and coming to the appointments. So it was like the perfect balance between both of my parents that really helped to bring everything all together. Where were um, parts of your budget that you wanted to splurge on? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, Music was so important to me. I'm a party girl. I like a good party. And I think that music is really important for that. So I wanted a great band and entertainment. And that was definitely an area that I wanted to splurge on. Then another area. What kind of band did you have? Like an eight person? I had a 12 person band. Um, Amazing. It was awesome. And was did you hear them perform before? How did you? They performed at my brother's wedding. Okay. Um, so I knew I loved them there. Again, like I've been naturally immersed in this space for years. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I've been naturally doing this, like just planning for my own mm-hmm. throughout all my experience. So you splurged on music so and I, entertainment. I definitely splurged on music and entertainment. And a dress was always so important to me. Like I've always dreamt of what my wedding dress would look like. And that was somewhere where like, I felt like I wanted to put my money towards and I did. And that was great. 
Where'd you get your dress? Dalia Lahav. I had three. Epic. Lo- I had three looks actually, <laughs> um, and they were all Dalia Lahav. Amazing. Um, and then the florals. Um, I definitely love an aesthetic. I will say though, with the florals, I had a really great balance between florals and candles and candles really help to elevate a room. And I feel like that sometimes goes unnoticed and that's a much more cost budget friendly way to host a party. So I incorporated a lot of candles, candelabras, hurricane candles to really elevate the florals that I had. And I didn't go overboard. There are some weddings where I've been to with the most extravagant florals ever. I only had one type of flower. I had baby breath, which is a really affordable flower Mm -hmm. too, but it really gives you like this magical, whimsy, whimsy, cloud-like feeling. Like you feel just it, it's just like a, such and a cool And you can sculpt look. it too into different shapes, which exactly. is also and really And that's nice. what I did. I had like them swirling, twirling around. Um, uh, it, it was just like a part of the aesthetic around like the banisters and everything in the room. So I did use baby's breath and candles. So although that was an area that was really important to me, I wouldn't say like it, we broke the bank with it. Mm-hmm. It was very reasonable. Um, and then there was areas that... I really didn't care to spend as much on. For example, I didn't have a wedding cake. I was, it just wasn't important to me, honestly. I didn't care to have that like one photo. I didn't care to save the cake in the fridge, the freezer for a year. I know some people do that. Um, So instead I did a champagne tower and that was a cost that I put to the side. I also did digital RSVPs instead of paper copies. And that was a cost that I just didn't really care that much about. So it just worked. Um, my wedding shoes, I, you can't see my shoes. I didn't understand like, why are people splurging so much on shoes if you can't even see it? And I guess in some dresses you can, but mine you couldn't. And I just got like a really simple pair. So I definitely had a balance of things that were important to me, but also places that I wanted to cut back on. As a content creator yourself, how did you think about content creation for your wedding day, whether that was the wedding photographer, yeah. or wedding videographer? Yeah. So I didn't want to worry about any of that at all during my wedding day. I didn't want to be thinking about content creation, but of course, capturing content is so important to me. So I hired a content creator the day of, in addition to my photographer and videographer, there's just something different about a professional photographer and videographer, as opposed to like the iPhone content, Mm -hmm. um, that makes you feel like you're really there. And I actually didn't hire someone till right before, um, that I met at an event. I love their work. I use them on a proposal and I wanted to hire him full-time for the wedding as my full-time content creator. And luckily he was available and we now have an amazing working relationship. We work together on majority of my proposals and he's made a huge impact on both my wedding day and helping to capture those moments and also my career with helping to capture other people's moments that I plan. His name is David Allen Visuals. Oh, cool. (laughs) I feel like a part of the venue selection process and sourcing out vendors that goes unnoticed is like the importance of having really strong relationships with the people who you're working with. I always say to my brides who follow me, like make sure that you're working with a team of people who you really can resonate and get along with because your wedding is so much more than the day of. It's the whole process. You're going to be working with these people for months, years, however long your engagement period is. And you really want to make sure that you're finding a team of people who you can trust and lean on and ask questions, get advice. And I feel like some people don't realize that. And someone like me who didn't have a wedding planner, I really leans on my vendors who I had really strong relationships with to ask them questions. No one knows what they do better than them. Like they do this for a living. So I would say definitely lean on your 
the vendors that you select and make sure that you're selecting people who not only bring amazing work to life, but also whose personalities you really get along with when you first meet them. You need to vibe. Yeah. It's so important. Like even something as small as like the hair and makeup people on your wedding day, you are spending all day with these people on your wedding day. You want to make sure that they're bringing the vibes and the energy on your wedding day. And I've heard some bad stories of people having bad experiences and that's the last thing that you want. So I would definitely recommend prioritizing that. Such good advice and so true because in that, on that day, you can't rewind or redo totally. anything. So totally. having the right people around you, and that's just not even the team that you're hiring. It's also who you want in the room with exactly. you that day, whether it's your bridal party or your family, like the vibes are so important on the day of the wedding, yep. getting ready and all that good. Bring stuff. the vibes. And if you're a bride, bring the energy. You could have <laughs> the best florals and aesthetics, and you can have every detail planned to a T. I've been to so many weddings and I've seen so many weddings. It always comes down to the bride and the groom and the energy that they bring to their guests, to each other, and the love that they radiate. It's true. It's so important. This has been the Loverly Wedding Podcast. We are hosted by Kelly Khalil, produced by Shaylin Carroll, Kayla Fitzgerald, Emily Feig, and Jennifer Alvarado. Watch the podcast on YouTube by subscribing to our channel and follow us and listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, and every major RSS feed.